So we just have a few formalities in opening up the meeting, and then we'll have the presentation that most of you are here for. Um, so are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? I have nothing. I have nothing. Okay. Is there any public comment before we get started? All right. So we'll approve the bills to the town. Um, the select board will do that uh, by signing them after the meeting. And uh, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes from the uh, October 25th, 2021 select board meeting? So moved. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, um, so uh, I would like to introduce um, Bob Link. He's the conservation director for the uh, Northeast Wilderness Trust. And he's here to um, present to uh, those that are here tonight um, the Woodbury Mountain Wilderness Preserve. Um, so, Bob, would you prefer to just give your presentation and then we'll entertain questions, or would you? Or should people feel free to ask questions as you're going? I guess, why don't we leave it there? I'll, I'll, if you have something really pressing, sure. But maybe the, a lot of the questions will be answered in the course of a, a fairly short presentation. And then I'll be open to, you know, we'll be open to questions at, at the end anyway. So okay. we'll see, see how it goes. OK. So um, good. So go ahead. You have the floor, I guess. And All right. Lights are good. You'll have to tell me how well I'm projecting. I'm not used to uh, projecting through a mask. So how's it going so far? Okay. Um, so I am Bob Link. I work for Northeast Wilderness Trust. Um, I came to Newt, and you can free, feel free to call our staff Newts. We, we like the name. Um, I came to Newt in February of this year, largely after working for 19 years for the Vermont Land Trust throughout the Champlain Valley and Central Vermont, um, my real love has always been conservation of wild lands, um, and Newt is really the only organization in the Northeast that does that. Um, and so I was eager to, to take a chance and apply for the job, and I'm happy to be here. Um, Sophie Veltrop uh, is here tonight as well. She works for Northeast Wilderness Trust for uh, outreach and, and uh, communications. Um, so we are here tonight, of course, to just kind of give a quick rundown of what, um, what we're proposing with the creation of the uh, Woodbury Mountain Wilderness Preserve. First of all, just, just to be clear about who we are, Northeast Wilderness Trust is a nonprofit land trust. We're based in Montpelier. We focus exclusively on wild lands and wilderness conservation in all of the New England states and New York, but in New York it's predominantly right now in the Adirondacks. We're doing some additional work in the Adirondacks or the Algonquin Adirondacks corridor which kind of stretches from the Thousand Islands region up into the Adirondacks and is connected to the Canadian wilderness. Um, so we, that's the region we focus on and our tools are similar to all land trusts. We focus on both um, acquisition of preserves, fee lands as we call them, purchasing lands to, to own in perpetuity. We also work with landowners and other land trusts at times or other public entities to permanently conserve with forever wild easements some of their own preserves or land that um, people own privately and would like to conserve with a stricter conservation easement that includes the forever wild provisions. I'll talk a bit about that in a minute. Um, to date, we have about 41,000 acres sort of split between fee-owned land, so per preserves that we hold, and easements that we hold. So this concept of forever wild, you, you may be familiar with it, you may not be familiar with it. Um, but far from being a strange new term, although it may be new, new to many of you, it has been around a long time. Um, 
It really originated in the Adirondacks, uh, where there is actually a constitutional clause that all the state-owned land in the Catskills and Adirondacks are forever wild lands, never to be harvested further, uh, timber not taken off. Um, it's basically wild lands uh, in perpetuity. And for that to ever change, there would have to be a constitutional amendment. And it's a very complicated process to change that. So that's where the term came from. Um, similarly, in um, the Baxter Park, which was create, began to be created back in 1930, when former Governor Percival Baxter donated 6,000 acres to the state, it is likewise, uh, or likewise there's forever wild, essentially land in Baxter, I think it's about 125,000 acres now. So it goes back a long time, and the Northeast Wilderness Trust adopted that approach because we, we saw that there wasn't anybody doing that, and there's lots of ecological region, reasons why we um, would like to, and scientists, ecologists, and even state agencies would like to see more wild lands throughout the Northeast. Quick project summary, We're, we started working with the Meyer family and E.B. Hyde company back in uh, January of this year. Um, their excellently managed forest land is a great candidate for forever wild protection. It's further along in its maturity um, and it's got a lot of ecological values. We, we're currently scheduled to close on the acquisition of the pro property in mid-December. Uh, our fundraising, we've reached about the $4 million mark uh, towards a total budget of $6.5 million. Uh, one of the grant sources that we are seeking funding from is the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board, the VHCB for short. Um, and that's uh, one of the main reasons for presenting tonight is we're hoping that the select board will consider writing a letter of support on behalf of the application. The HCB has um, historically, since 1987, um, been very involved in communities, both uh, helping to, to create affordable housing throughout um, needed affordable housing parts of, of Vermont. Um, they also, the, the other side of their mission is conservation. And um, each year, it's statutorily through the property transfer tax. 50% of the property transfer tax is supposed to go into VHCB's coffers for responding to the needs of affordable housing and conservation. And when there's a lot of property being transferred, naturally there's a lot of demand for both affordable housing and a lot of pressure on wild, wild areas and uh, agricultural land. And so the, it's, it sort of fluctuates when the need is there. It has never been, well, I shouldn't say never, but for a long time it had not been fully funded. Um, and periodically there have been additional funding source uh, streams that come into VHCB, but basically it doesn't come from taxpayers per se. It, it's, it's through the property transfer tax. Occasionally they have a capital appropriation that, that um, raises a, additional funding. Um, The, I don't know, could you see that map, by the way? Do you, you get an idea? All the pink lands are, are what we're talking about. They're labeled EB1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I think. Um, but you can see the basic layout there. And uh, we do have a, a handout here where, is that, that map appears in there, right? So we do have a, a map you can take away that shows similar. Um, w one thing that um, you should know about how we do our wor work, um, Northeast Wilderness Trust, needless to say, is focused on wilderness, wildlands conservation. That's our mission. It's, it's highly unlikely that we would ever stray beyond that because we have such um, a distinct role. Um, and it's highly unlikely that our board would ever decide that the lands that we hold and own should do something else other than what our mission is, is directed to do. Um, so need, nevertheless, we like to have a second layer of, of uh, legal protection on the properties we own. 
So in the case of this project, we sought um, Vermont River Conservancy to be the holder of a conservation easement that would give that extra protection. So they've agreed to do that. And if the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board does make a major grant to us, they will be a co-holder of that easement. So it's sort of backup protection for this to stay the way we're proposing it will stay. As far as the tax implications um, for local communities, all the land is currently in the use value appraisal program, the current use program. E.B. Hyde, of course, has had it enrolled that way. Um, that status will not change. We believe in paying taxes. We also believe we would like to enroll it in the current use program. Conservation organizations are allowed. There's a special category for enrolling as a conservation organization. We are not required to harvest um, and uh, cut firewood or anything like that. We can, we can keep it as wild land through the program. But it, it should not change anything with regard to the taxation. Um, I already talked about VHCB and the, the property tax, uh, property transfer tax, so I'll let that one alone for now. Um, the other, one of the other major things people are probably curious about is public access. Um, uh, the family, of course, is largely allowed public access. Um, this is a way of making that permanent, essentially. We're not going to close it to public use. Um, it will be available for all kinds of pedestrian, recreation, uh, hunting, hiking, backcountry skiing, snowshoeing. <clears throat> there are existing rights of way, West Woodbury Road and Eagle Edge Trail, uh, prominent among them. We will not change the status of those. The public can continue to use those. We're also <clears throat> planning to establish uh, sort of two trail segments, formalizing an approach from the north, uh, from the Hardwick direction, and another from Woodbury up Woodbury Mountain. So the public access is going to be a permanent provision of, of what um, we expect the property will serve the public to do. Um, <coughs> in terms of the, the important aspects about it, uh, about the property, it sits at a crossroads for far-ranging wildlife. You've got the, to the west, you've got the Worcester mountain range, which is really the last undeveloped mountain range in Vermont. The north, to the north is Northeast Kingdom, and it has become recognized as uh, the Worcester to Kingdom linkage for wildlife movement. And this preserve kind of lies in the heart of that linkage, which is uh, between three large forested blocks totaling 85,000 acres. You won't be able to see those maps, but I'll tell you what they represent in a second. Um, Vermont conservation design is something that was undertaken by the Department of Fish and Wildlife with lots of help from other entities um, and ecologists throughout the state. And their intent was really to, to create a plan that secures and sustains Vermont's natural areas and wildlife. One goal of the plan is for, and notably for this, the purposes of this um, preserve, one goal is for old forest, older forest, lands 150 plus, 200 uh, years old plus, eventually ancient forest, to comprise at least 9% of Vermont's landscape. Currently, there's only 3% of Vermont's landscape that is legally protected in a way that will ensure that these forests reach maturity and stay that way. That way. <clears throat> so, permanent conservation of large landscapes like this proposed preserve is essential to meeting that goal. What you're seeing in this um, above here is this map uh, to the left, you are seeing all the conserved land highlighted in the region that we, well, all the states we cover. Um, and that's a lot of land. If you look at the second one, that is the land that is considered old forest protected as wilderness. 
um, or in land that will become old forest, protected in, in a way that legally will lead it to that um, endpoint. <coughs> so you can see Vermont, um, the spine of the um, Green Mountains, there's some highlights because of wilderness areas, land that is in Green Mountain National Forest. Um, but just a smattering of that is, is found elsewhere in the state. Did I skip anything there? Let's see, no. Okay. <clears throat> the proposed preserve also stands out for its diversity of natural communities. It's critical habitat for wide-ranging predators like bear, fishers, and bobcats, as well as for salamanders and tiny fingernail clams. There's lots of American beech and black cherry trees, which are critical sources of food for wildlife that are preparing for winter. And you should also note that most protected wilderness in the Northeast is at higher elevations. Um, in the West, they call it rock and ice because it's the land that nobody really wanted to do much or could do much with. Um, that's not strictly true, but it, there's a preponderance of higher elevation land wherever you're talking about wilderness areas. And the fact is that lower elevation habitats host greater biodiversity. Um, they're key wildlife corridors for wildlife that are moving and adapting to climate change. And in the case of the preserve, the average elevation is 1,550 feet, which means it will become Vermont's largest privately protected low elevation wilderness preserve. The proposed preserve also lies in um, sort of a divide between the Lamoille and Winooski rivers, both of which, of course, drain into Lake Champlain. <clears throat> and maintaining old forest for, old forest cover for the lake's headwater streams is a very effective and cost efficient way of protecting the, the lake's health. Audubon has mapped this area as Vermont's only important bird area of global significance. Preserving unmanaged forest within this largely managed landscape here in Vermont will ensure birds like the winter wrens, northern goshawks, black burnian, black and black-throated blue warblers, uh, which all thrive in old forest, Will, be, will continue to be good homes for their species. Um, and incidentally, the, the saw-wet owl that you see in this photo thrives in spruce cinnamon fern swamps. Um, and there are at least 12 of those on the former E.B. Hyde lands. Old forests uh, not only store immense amounts of carbon. They also are considerably more effective at removing carbon from the atmosphere than young forests. So it makes them sort of a, a key natural climate solution. Right now, the land, we had an inventory done of the carbon uh, on the property. The land currently stores at least 546,000 metric tons of carbon and has the capacity to sequester, capture an additional 1,155 metric tons each year. And if protected as forever wild, its stored carbon will never be lost to resource extraction. A lot of the um, forests that are in the carbon markets are managed forests and after 40 years often the, the contract runs out and there's there's certainly a chance, a very good chance, that the harvesting will take place after that and the carbon will be lost. With a wilderness protection program like we are involved in, um, that will never be the case. It will remain protected and not harvested. And I guess uh, to wrap up, I just want to say thanks for having us here tonight. Um, we're very appreciative of uh, the Meyer family for all the years, the, the decades that they've uh, managed, very well managed, the forest. 
and for their willingness to consider this kind of an outcome for land that they were trying to figure out what the future would be. Um, so we're grateful for that. I know it's a different kind of proposal than is typical, but I think that's what's so exciting about it, and we're certainly hopeful you will be supportive of it as the public in the public, and that the select board will will support it. Um, and I'm happy to take questions. Uh, any anything you want to ask? Sure. Um, just clarification: hunting with no tracker. Yes. Yes. No field, uh, no wheeled vehicles at all on that. That would include bikes. No mountain bikes, but. Right now, there's a vast trail that goes that comes through the property. We will continue to allow that vast trail, and at its current site, they they may have a, a an idea for rerouting if it goes along an existing woods road. We would entertain that. In terms of wheel vehicles, the public right of ways currently are used by more than just feet. <laughs> so right now, there is traffic through there. We're not closing those off. At the <coughs> so you're not. So wheel vehicles will be able to, to go through there. Well, right now, the, in the public right of ways, if they are if there are wheel vehicles allowed on those now, we cannot change that unilaterally. It's still a town road. So, it's still a town road. The class four. Class four, yeah, class four roads. You've got the one that up from County Road, and then you've got Slate right. Pond all the way across. Right. They're town roads. They're class so four roads. You, you probably are familiar with the history of the swamp, swamp vehicles and stuff. And the Meyer family had a dickens of a time trying to prevent that from happening. Right, how, are you going to, how are you going to enforce this uh, in terms of uh, preventing such cases in the future? Well, we've, we've had a lot of experience in other uh, preserves and other parts of, the, of, of our region, and we're going to have, have patience. We're going to try to work um, and figure out ways to make the conditions better. And I, I don't know yet how we'll approach it. Uh, we won't be doing anything, of course, on the public right of ways without coordination with the uh, people, landowners that are affected by it on either side of us with the select boards. Um, at, at this point, um, we know it's it's going to be a challenge, uh, but we're, we're uh, going to embrace it. And slowly over time, maybe conditions will improve. Thank you. You had mentioned uh, trail access from both Hardwick and Woodbury. Yes. And the trail access from Woodbury, is that going to be on the western edge of the town over West Woodbury, or is it going to be on this side of town, or is it going to be both? I don't know yet. We're, we're going to spend some time trying to look at, once we get ownership of the property, we've been thinking a little bit about it and talking to the Meyer family and, and seeing what the current conditions are. And <clears throat> we're, I guess, stay tuned. We'll be happy to um, take input from people who have ideas about it. <clears throat> we know it's something that would be valuable and important for the public. Yes? Yeah, similar question um, about trail access, but you said formalize the trails. Um, maybe that's kind of what, maybe I skipped it out yet. But what, so, you know, maybe you don't have the exact plans, but from past experience, what does that look like? Is it? signage? Is it maps? Is it doing work on the trails? Is it, yeah. Yeah, a little bit of, of all. Um, we, would, we would design a trail that we think would be, um, would stand the test of time. In other words, it would not be a, a route that would uh, lead to a lot of erosion problems. And, and so we basically do a, a trail planning exercise and make it so that it's not going to create problems that we don't want to create. So kind of follow up to that, yep. that could be significant capital allocation to that. So is that included in the budget for, for the purchase or is that, how does funding for that potentially come later? Yeah, it, it, it depends a little bit, but we have, we have, we're raising a, a fair amount of money for that sort of thing as part of the overall project. And if we find it's not enough, we will raise money separately for that if necessary. Yes. Good question. Our school has been working toward outdoor education. We've got some beautiful land right around the school here. Would you be agreeable to working with the school for some field trips or science and study projects? Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yes. If you were to put it on the balance and say, what effect will this 
have to the well-being of the average Woodbury citizen, and and how will it enhance the long-range um, effect on the community? And um, with, what would be the most dramatic changes that the average Woodbury uh, person would experience, and what would be the benefit that he could expect? Oh, tough. <laughs> Good question. Um, Good question. I guess. I guess what I would. I guess I would say that first of all, Woodbury would stand out among all the communities in Vermont for having a very high percentage of land that was going to be sequestering carbon, was going to be creating ecological conditions that are rare in the state. It's a, it's, there's something about wild land that it's hard to express if, you're, if you've not been in old or ancient forest it is magical. I grew up in the Adirondacks in the summertime. I, I, at the time, I didn't really realize how special it was. Um, but I still have land over there that the, my family had a wilderness canoeing camp over there. And I grew up visiting old forests that were becoming ancient forests. And there's just nothing quite like it. So I think the long-term benefits are access to land that is unique uh, over time. Um, and the educational and, and kind of, if you're spiritual, spiritual benefits, the, the feeling that you get in the woods is different. And I think that is the long-term biggest benefit of what, what's happening here. Um, it also, you know, you will see, um, in general, less impacts from flooding. You will see more wildlife because it will be um, moving through an area that is protected instead of further fragmented. So there's a lot of long-term benefits that are not, they're not immediately obvious, but they will be um, very special. And, and you will not see further fragmentation of what is iconic land, an iconic landscape in the town of Woodbury. Um, and I think the educational benefits, things that um, students and adults can learn about, about something so close to home, there, it's, you're gonna be the envy of this part of the state and the whole state. Yes? Uh, how many acres is the Woodbury portion? Uh, Whoa, boy. I should know this an the answer to this. Do you know? It's about half. Is it about half? Okay, so it's 5,459 acres. I think there's high 2000s, mid, mid to high 2000s in Woodbury. I think so. To follow up on Peter's question about class four roads and town trails. Yes. To be clear and transparent, the only thing that can change the air would be for the select board, is that correct? We would have to change yeah, the status. We'd right. have to change the status. Yep. The town, the town class four roads and the town via the select board would be the only entity that could change the status of those. So ideally, I would think that your, that would be your, your goal. Well, I, I, th I think ideally, what we're really looking for, I think, long term, is that conditions for access improve. Meaning, conditions for people who, <clears throat> right now you can't, walk in some places, you have to kind of go off to the side because there is a lot of damage to the existing rights of way. <clears throat> so I think we're, you know, if use is not damaging what's there, we have no problem with it. But if it's causing resource issues, which right now it is, we, we would like to see that improve. And if we can figure out a way to work with everyone to make that happen. Well, let me rephrase my question. So ideally, you would like to have more forward and more motorcycles. <clears throat> No more trucks, feed, stuff like that. On those rights of way, on those those uh, class four roads. I would say that we're on the ATV side of things. We're we're primarily looking to make sure that they don't go off that track. Right now, there's plenty of areas where they they go off, and that's where you're on private land. That's where you're doing resource damage, and that's been a problem for the Myers. It would be a problem for us when we own it. <coughs> So we'd like to kind of begin to see improvements there. 
In terms of the main thoroughfare, if if they're staying, if they're not causing damage there and the towns are okay with it, we don't have a problem with that continuing. Um, if it be, continues to be a persistent problem over time, maybe there's ways to address it, but we're, we're not there yet. And I think we'll just have to kind of see, you know, how things go over time. So, Monty, just uh, speaking as a select board member, um, you know, those two roads, the, the West Woodbury, um, Road and what we affectionately call the Ho Chi Minh Trail, um, <laughs> those will continue to remain as accessible to ATV traffic. Um, personally, I would wish that the mud boggers would go somewhere else because that's the type of vehicle that does the most damage. Um, in, in my time here in Woodbury, walking up uh, what's called the, the Woodbury Road or the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Um, when I first moved here, I probably could have driven my Subaru up over that hill into West Woodbury. And now it's just ledge and mud, and um, it's really eroded an amazing amount in the last 30 years. But uh, it's still a favorite trail for people to use, and I don't see the town changing that at all. Um, and, you know, I think at this point in time, the towns, municipalities are responsible for erosion on class four roads. So it, it may be at some point in the future that the town would need to address some of those issues from, from um, just use in general, whether it's logging or ATVs or um, whatever, you know, vehicles. Um, but there's, I don't see the town um, doing anything to close off that type of traffic. Yes? Um, so I feel like I get mixed messages about this pretty frequently. Um, I've heard comments from you and other select board members previously that the town wasn't particularly trying to close these roads off to ATV traffic. But I've also seen minutes from recent select board meetings that said otherwise. I think actually you brought up specifically probably did. That's probably trying to close some of the roads. Um, and I also saw a recent comment on Front Porch Forum about a future goal being to close down some of those um, class four roads to I, vehicle access. I, I, That's a big concern for me. Okay. I think what I said, Elizabeth, is that there is another classification for a class four road to a trail, which means it's still owned by the town, and it pretty much uh, uh, eliminates the town's responsibility for any type of maintenance at all. So, if, you know, if there were erosion issues that through the uh, general road permit the town was responsible for with the class four road, uh, reclassifying it to a trail would um, eliminate the town's responsibility for that. Um, you know, like the Ho Chi Minh Trail, two, three summers ago, we had the Youth Conservation Corps um, go up both the west and the east side of that road to put in bars to help with, uh, get, get water off the road. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not sure what state those bars are in now, but um, that was a project that, that the town didn't have to pay any money for, and it was a, um, meant to help um, slow down the erosion, you know, get the water that might be channeled down a, a tire track and just continually uh, washing away the road to get that water off the road so that the road um, would still be functional. Um, it did help a lot there. They're still there in the lower section where they didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I could feed them for a time, they did all over these years. So, as far as declassifying them, um, you know, bringing them down from roads to trails, mm -hmm. the only one that I'm familiar with that that's happened with was one up near Buck Lake that was a class 4 road. And when right. that was reclassified as a trail, it was also at the same time closed down to more vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, so. Like, if you're talking about reclassifying these roads, would you also be talking about limiting access? Those are, those, that section of road is closed in the summertime when the Buck Lake Camp is open. Otherwise, it is accessible. To motor vehicles, ATVs, etc. ATVs. Hopefully okay. not, not the mud boggers, but ATVs, yes. So. Part of the reason for closing it during the summer while the camp is in session is that, you know, there are kids up there, um, and then there might be a squadron of ATVs that come ripping right through the camp. So it was kind of working with Fish and Wildlife to, to keep that road um, 
uh, close dur during the summer season when the camp is in session. Uh, yeah, I was uh, wondering if you could speak a little bit more about how the lands can remain in the use value of the Rizzo program and the timber not being cut. My understanding is that you can enroll a portion of it. Um, is it through the conservation status of your organization that you're able to the entire yes. parcel? It, it just seems counterintuitive because UBA is is really for managing forests. Right. And, you know, there can be, you know, I think portions of land can be enrolled in Estes, what they, what's called that Estes. Right. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's um, <clears throat> Nature Conservancy, other conservation organizations, including Northeast Wilderness Trust, are permitted to enroll as conservation organizations and are not um, required to harvest. So. Nature Conservancy is probably the best example. They've got 55 or so preserves around the state, um, and they typically do not manage those, um, some perhaps a little bit, but basically they enroll in current use. And I think there's been a general recognition that it's a fairly rare circumstance, but it also provides great ecological benefits that the state recognizes. They don't, um, they don't extend that right to the private landowner other than the conservation private landowner. Um, so the program has never promoted um, ecological protection of the sort that we do. Um, and that may change over time. There has been you know, some movement towards considering changes to the current use program that would allow those landowners who are interested in protecting their land with, say, a forever wild easement and being able to get the property tax benefits. But right now, that's not the case. The only exception is, as you say, the ESTAs, the areas that are treated specially, and your forester will designate them as such. And, and you'll get ecolo ecologists to kind of say, yeah, that's an area that should be kept out of harvesting. But um, anyway, the conservation organization out is the only one that allows uh, that sort of enrollment without harvesting. Thank you. I was just curious, um, how is it that you guys would, um, I guess you say you would require a tree permit for hunting? And I'm curious that how that works because like, I think if you know, I wanted to not have someone hunt on my land, I would have to post it by permission only or something like that. And I'm curious, like, what mechanism, how you guys go about doing that? Yeah, we basically, um, we say hunting with permission. Um, and we, it's a free permit process. We just like to know that, you know, who's, who's hunting on the property. We have a very successful hunting program on our other preserves in Maine. And people just call in and say, can you send me a permit that I can, a uh, permit application? You can do it online, whatever way is easiest for you, and and that's it's a fairly straightforward program. So it's sort of honor system. It is an honor legally, system. Legally, there's no way for you to do that without posting the land. I mean, you right? Can we, on unposted land. That's right. I mean, you. It's an honor system, basically. Unless you're there. Tell yep. Yes. Will you be seeking any permits from other people that use the property for, say, snowshoeing, hiking, or whatever? No. Just hunting? Just hunting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes? My understanding with current use is that you can't post your land. I know you're not talking about posting it, but it just doesn't seem consistent to me with that to be requiring people to ask for permits. I'm only saying this because, you know, obviously this is a huge tract of land and many of us have been hunting portions of it for a really long time. So mm -hmm. this has become a big change for the Woodbury people. I guess it would be a change then, yes. Um, can't, can't deny that. Um, but again, it's a fairly straightforward process and um, it's, you know, you, you could have, I mean, the, the alternative is eventually an owner who does post the land and says no hunting, and um, this way we, we, we believe that hunting can be important for the ecosystem, um, and uh, this is the way we prefer to do it.
Miss Elizabeth, can I just ask you really quickly? Did you ever ask permission from the Meyer family? Uh, no, I never asked. What we right because we never had. What's that? We we never we never had. I I just have a comment to that too. I you know I I hunt. I grew up in a hunting family, and the ethic that I learned was that if you're going to hunt on somebody else's land, that you get permission to do that, um, which is what I've done here with Woodbury. So it's it's pretty much the same thing. I'm you know I know that. Not if it's not posted, it's pretty much understood that you can hunt on there. You don't need to ask permission. Um, but that, that's kind of the way I was taught for my family, is that if you're going to hunt on somebody's land, uh, you should you know, get permission from them. So it's a slight change, Miss Elizabeth, because we will have another potential group that we have to go through. Mm -hmm. But it's a fairly straightforward process, the way that we understand it to this point. But we're not making any decisions right now. Yeah, I mean, I just, I guess for me, I'm having a hard time understanding that even if I'm going to snowshoe on someone else's property, right, I have that. the same issue. Mm -hmm. I'm really struggling to understand why there is this bias against hunting. And, and to ask, would there ever be a situation where you would deny somebody? And why, why would you want to have a registration of hunters on the land? I mean, well, for one thing, it's good to know what the hunting pressure is. But why doesn't that apply to snowshoers, well, because not not... to skiers? Why is that bias there? Well, I think if you're carrying a firearm, that's a little bit different, I think, than snowshoeing, isn't it? A little I bit? carry a firearm a lot of times. I'm I guess sorry, I don't, I don't understand. I, I, may, may I speak to this not as a select board member, but as to someone who has mapped the entire... So I'm not speaking as your select board member. I'm speaking as a geologist who mapped all of the Woodbury Quadrangle. Did I walk around? Did Actually, you ask permission? Yes. 100%. Okay. For every single parcel that I walked on. No questions. So I always acted that way, but that was just my mentality because I am reviewing a landscape that is not mine. I didn't take anything. And if you're going to hunt a property, you do potentially take things. It's a public resource. It's not privately right. owned. It's not privately owned. But you're crossing someone else's land. Just like I would be snowshoeing or Absolutely. cross country skiing. So there is a balance here. We're trying to find that balance here. And so this is a really important discussion to have. What do you balance? Well, we don't. We don't know yet. That's why we're having this conversation. Sir, you're not making any sense. Yeah, you're not. That doesn't make sense. You, you yeah. said that that's going to be the rule when this transaction goes through. Well, it's not, it's not going to be a decision for you any later. We haven't decided on any rules yet, sir. You just said that that's going to be the way it's going to be. We, have, we haven't decided on any rules yet. Well, I mean, we... we no, yeah, you're speaking so, up for that. Sophie, you want to... I'm not speaking up at all. But let's try to keep things civil, please. I'll speak yes, at all, yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Could I turn on? Uh, I just want to say that Northeast Water Distress doesn't deny anybody the hunting permission. And in fact, in the course of our preserves, hunters have been some of our greatest allies. There are people who are on the ground, they go off the trail, they see so many things that um, the average person doesn't. And so I just want to make sure that you know that the hunting program is supposed to be there to welcome and to create those connections and not to make hunters have to jump into another hoop. And the goal is to create those connections and build that relationship. Um, and so we've seen that on our other preserves. And it's not, um, yeah, we also really value the, the um, role that hunters play and the ecosystem. Um, so I just want to make sure that you know that there's no like denying of hunting. That's not the purpose of the permit program at all. Can you explain what is the purpose of the registration system? Yes, it's for keeping in touch and building community. And that's what we've seen on the other preserves, where we have these connections <coughs> building with hunters who are on the ground, who know the lands better than anybody else. Yeah, sorry. I was just explaining that the hunting permission system doesn't deny anybody permission. 
is to keep those connections and build that community. And Rutgers Wilderness Trust really values the role of hunters in the, the, this system that's been, you know, out of balance without having predators. Um, the deer pressure on our forests is immense. And in other other preserves, we've seen those connections be really important. Um, so I just want to make sure it's clear that there's no denying of anybody's connections. So if you want to make connections with hunters, why wouldn't you want the same thing for snowshoes, hikers, and skiers? Or no permit at all? You know, I mean, why would you want those connections? Yes. That's, that's a great question, and that's um, the that's thing. That's and why we're talking about it. That's why we're talking about it. And something that we've done for other places to, is to start to have like a log book where people sign in. We try and get people to um, sign up for our email list. Um, so yes, we do want to build those connections too. I think this gentleman's back. back over here. One of those gentlemen in the back. So as a hunter, you know, and I've spent a lot of time in public area mountain. I've hiked that thing a lot. When I'm looking for deer, I'm gonna go to where the food source is. Most food sources for deer are like logging areas that are like four or five years old. That's where I'm finding deer. I'm not finding it in old growth forests. So I mean the managing of a forest is to keep food coming in, new growth. I mean, one thing I've learned about New Hampshire and Maine, they have really good deer populations. We don't have a good deer population here at all. And that's one thing they do is they log. And they take care of their forests. What do you um, I just think, you know, I guess I'm kind of opposed to this. Um, or I would prefer the select board not to um, write this letter of support. And I just think forever is a very long time, and it kind of smacks the hubris to say that, you know, we know enough about what the needs of our community and, you know, our great, 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 great grandchildren will be to, you know, support this big restriction, restriction on this piece of property. And, you know, I kind of see it in a trend of, you know, the nationally like the kind of gutting of rural communities where you know you see a loss of working landscapes be it woods or farms and you know that we end up becoming sort of places where people can't work you know unless it's to you know work on the homes the vacation homes work on people's vacation homes other than that you know it's a bedroom community and you got to drive an hour to work which is a very great 55 and either. so that's all i have to say thanks all right, I think that's plenty of that, uh, Bob, I was wondering if you could repeat something you said a few minutes ago about what might happen to hunting access if someone else purchases the property. I'm not sure everyone heard you. Well, I mean, you could imagine a scenario where somebody decided to purchase the property as a retreat from New York City or whatever, and they do not allow hunting, and they patrol it, and they make sure that you can't use it. That is a def definite possibility. We are offering an option for continued public use of the property, including hunting. Yes, please go ahead. I, I think I support the select board approving this or supporting this. Uh, I wrote a question about um, when I look at the original, I've been here for 60 years. Um, and I see it's pristine, it hasn't changed, it's not like anything would be taken away, but my, my fear is waking up one morning and seeing windmills along that ridge of the line, because some promoter has the money to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I talked with them up and on an email, and you assured me that this can happen. You can't dance with the devil. And, and uh, put in anything to development like that. As far as people liking things the way they were, there never was development up there. There was logging, and there's always going to be a, a controversy for that, you know. About, but there's acres and acres being logged around here anyway. So I just wanted to voice my support, and uh, thank you. 
Yes, thank you. Hi. Um, I, I, just to, to go off a conversation that happened just a minute ago, I've seen that happen um, where I, I lived uh, on Hawaii and I watched thousands of acres that were public get bought up in a bay uh, by Facebook and suddenly we can't go there anymore. I used to work at a little school with kids and suddenly it's like, oh, it's gone. And, um, you know, I hear stories of hedge funds and other, you know, people investing in very large properties. And I see this organization that's based in Vermont that has goals that are centered around, you know, um, addressing climate change and biodiversity collapse and fragmentation of these things. Like, I'm so grateful for that, that you're, you know, have this in mind. Um, I guess that's you not know, mostly a comment, but my question is, you mentioned that you'd like the support of um, the people in Woodbury, and for those of us who do want to support you in this project, how can you best do that? Well, we are, um I guess there's, there's many ways you can support the organization. For this particular project, we are in a fundraising mode. Um, so uh, financial support to help with the acquisition. We also um, are, we have properties that we um, have volunteer monitors for uh, to visit periodically because we have conservation easements and or properties that we, um, we just keep track of Perpetually, we have a permanent responsibility for that. So our stewardship team frequently embraces opportunities uh, or volunteers who, who want to join in on that. Um, Sophie, any other thoughts about things to help? Um, well, you know, building a community around this place is a part of what we're excited about. So if you are uh, interested in taking school kids out, um, joining us for a hike, putting up signs, um, hunting on the land, um, be in touch, and we do want to grow a, a network of people who care and um, are connected to this land. Um, and I believe I'm going to be a part of that, so you can find it afterwards. And, um, we will have our contact information, et cetera, available. Uh, we've got a few questions. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and go on. Go ahead. So I got another question. So do you have any intentions on any logging or anything like that in the future? No. Okay. Are you working with Vermont well, like, Fishing Game? Well, one exception, there is a 32-acre section of the property for roughly eight-acre plots that were plantation pines. Um, and we're kind of exploring a, a relationship with UVM to treat them differently, to eventually transition them into a new forest type and see which treatments might get us to old growth in a, in a, a different way. So it's a minor part of the property, but it's something that we, we decided we might approach. And are you at all working with uh, Vermont Department of Fish and Game on the management of the property? No, not right now. Are you supposed to be or not? No, we, it's private land. We can manage it the way we're intending to, which is to base, basically be hands off and let natural processes take their course. I'm sorry, I'm just in the back with the hat. I would just like to add that um, with like catastrophic global climate change is happening. Vermont is going to be a refuge for lots of people with climate change, the way that the Green Mountains hold water here. And um, we are going to see a lot of refugees from around this country come to Vermont. And we, this is such an important project to make sure that there is land preserved for the wildlife here that can stay pristine. I used to live in the Pacific Northwest and study land that had been, that was managed by the state. I lived next to a wildlife preserve that had uh, land in current use behind me, the whole mountain. And I came back five years later and they had logged all the state land behind there. And the entire wildlife refuge, 
all the trees had been knocked down. There were eagles there, otters there, tons of wildlife that had been catastrophically destroyed. And the, that wildlife was lost because that land was mismanaged. And so I would like to see places in Vermont that are preserved to hold space for these animals that are also seeking refuge from climate change. And, you know, the broad-tailed hawks that we see here come all the way from Brazil, and they breed here. And so I think that they have every right to life during climate change as we do. And we have to set up land refuge for them. Thanks, Miss. Sorry. Uh, oh, Matt. Matt. Sure. Yeah, I just want to maybe it's beating a dead horse at this point, but it's really important that we acknowledge that change is going to happen with this land base right now. There's an ownership transition that's going to happen in some fashion. This is an opportunity for us to have input in that process and build a relationship with a new owner who's coming to us, as opposed to who knows what. If this doesn't happen with the Northeast Wilderness Trust, we have no idea what could happen. It could be wind turbines on top. It could just, Bob said, it could become posted, no access, no public access of any sort. Um, this is an opportunity that preserves the vast majority of the public uh, benefit that we currently get from this property. Hunting access, recreational access of all sorts, hiking, skiing, uh, other uh, motorized use of the public uh, rights of way through the property, all the scenic benefits to the town, um, not to mention the whole host of ecological benefits, wildlife, and all of that sort of thing. Um, so I think this is an incredible opportunity for us that we should not have <coughs> essentially guarantees that we maintain most of the benefits that we're currently receiving, and it costs us absolutely nothing. It'd be foolish to pass it up. I'd like to just make a comment about the wind turbines, if you don't mind. Just so, I'm not sure if everyone is aware of the history of, of that property with the Meyer family. It was probably 10, 15, um, maybe even 20 years ago that there was a developer that was interested in in putting wind turbines on that Woodbury Mountain Ridge, uh, they approached the Meyer family. Um, and fortunately, the Meyer family came to speak with residents in Woodbury about whether or not they would want that. Um, and they pretty much overwhelmingly were told that no, um, that uh, the, you know, the residents that they spoke with uh, did not want that to happen. And the Meyer family um, told the developer um, Sorry, um, we're not going to do that. Um, so that was and is a possibility uh, with a different landowner. Um, fortunately, you know, in my opinion, it didn't happen then, and um, um, hopefully, it'll never happen. Um, but I just wanted to. I'm not sure if everyone's aware of that history or not. Peter was. Peter, please. Uh, I just want to reinforce what the gentleman before said about the transition. Um, you know, Hugo and Justice Wheeler amassed about a third of the land mass of this town in the 50s. And we, we really have been going through, I remember being on the, uh, the uh, Lister board before the current use came in, and we had, to, we had to negotiate with Hugo and John for factory each year, just to sort of, uh, but it's, it, it was a unique situation. And, uh, but we have benefited from it because it's been totally undeveloped. I had, I, a week ago, uh, we took a, my wife and I, Kathy, we took an airplane ride out of Newport and went all around. It was a beautiful day. I was amazed at to see some of these areas that had been, had these two or three mile driveways going up to the very highest points on these ridges. And, and that's not beyond the pale that could happen around here. And, uh, and that's what I mean by this has been a really unique situation and that we're in a transition period that we really should be very cautious and, 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 and try to look out in the best interest of, of the entire ecosystem and, and the, and the uh, community. Um, and this is deliberate in that sense. And I think it's, I'm firmly in, in favor of this because uh, it could be developed. It really could be developed. Okay, Sir? I support this. It would protect, help protect water. 
We have more water than any town in Vermont, so it'll help to protect the water, help to protect from development. I think we'd all rather see large trees up there than towers or turbines. They're remain keeping access open. It's not, maybe not ideal for all of us, but they'll be our neighbors. They're asking us to let them know if we want to hunt. Okay, we can work with them. They're not, uh, they're, they're allowing access to motorized vehicles. The, the issue is not access, and I know it's on the public road, but through the property. The issue is not access, it's damage. So we can work to stop the damage. And we will lose, we will lose some uh, timber harvesting potentially, but maybe that will be offset by folks coming into town, moving to town. Maybe there will be some different interests that develop in Woodbury. Hey, this is a town that takes care of its land, takes care of its neighbors. It's preserving, uh, preserving its it's important resources. So maybe we'll maybe we'll have more tourists coming in. We'll get a general store going, more home-based businesses. So I I think there's I think there's more to gain here than we will lose. So I support it, Jack. As I understand it, the issue before the select board tonight is whether to write a letter in support of this project that would go to BHCD. And I'm, I'm wondering if it would be out of order to ask for a show of hands of the people in this room who would support that better going forward. Or to do a, a, a public hearing on the issue of the ballot. You know, write in and just, what do you call it? <laughs> But like a town meeting, now we have to have a certain percentage of the people. It's not a matter of how we vote it. So that's where I'm going. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in people's yeah. viewpoint. I'm one of, as a sitting board member in the hot seat on this deal, one of my concerns I have with this is we're being asked to support this, and I'm an abutting landowner. I've lived there for almost 30 years. First I heard about it was two weeks ago. And as a select board member, the first I heard about this was two weeks ago. Um, we, and there's been some comments and concerns, which I think are valid, shared. Um, and we haven't been asked for any input, so it's really not an input thing. It's sort of like a support or not support in my own. What, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board is interested in the opinions from officials and the public on applications that come before them. Um, for them to make a grant, they like to see letters of support from local officials. So specifically, we're looking for as described, a letter of support for our application to get a grant from them to do what we're proposing. Okay, and then the, just the back up for me personally is private sellers, you guys raising the money privately to buy all the land, we don't really need any input. Um, but when we take the taxpayer money, this is my concern, once we start collecting taxpayer dollars, I think taxpayers should have some input. And, and just let me clarify, even though it's a it's a limited source. It's still like if I sell my house, I got to pay that tax. It's not a choice for me. And that, that's my concern is that the the taxpayers aren't being represented in that portion. So again, fully understanding that if you get all private donors for the $6.5 million and you're a private foundation, you, you're right, you, that's two happy parties doing their thing. My concern is, is whether I want to support that just because I don't see any taxpayer input. Like there's concerns with the hunting, which I didn't know about. Um, and, and again, that's what I'm just struggling with is because I just didn't even know about this until two weeks ago. So I, it's for me, I need to kind of have a little more time to absorb this and kind of think about it. Sorry, what, what portion of the purchase is funded by taxpayers? Did I miss, did About I miss? a million bucks is my well, again, you're uh, asking uh, for. Again, it's a taxpayers, you know, we're talking about a property transfer. But tax. it's still a tax. That's all I'm trying to say. It's still yeah, a tax. It, it, it's a tax, but it's on all sales in right. the whole state. But it's still, that's all I'm saying. Not, not, yeah. not the whole state. state. Yeah, it's all the state. It's just still tax money. So, again, my opinion being if you're going to have taxpayer funding, we should get some taxpayer input. It's like a federal grant. <coughs> Bottom line is it's still taxpayer, still taxpayer money. money. Right. Yeah. But that's, I'm just sharing that with everybody. And I'm, I am interested in your opinion because I want to represent the predominant view in the community. So I, I am interested in it. 
I understand that this could go through whether you get the brain. Correct. Correct. Understood that. Yeah, and I, I should address the you know short-term nature, but I, I will say that we had to work with a family since January. We could since not since this past January. Yeah, okay, this past January, um, and you know it's a long process to get a family of that size with as many input, uh, 19 members on the EBI board. It took them a long time, which it should have, to decide which, which course to go. And we weren't at liberty to start talking about it until it was a real thing. So our contract with them was signed October 1st. Okay. So, and we got our application into VHCB on that day, and we've been working to kind of begin reaching sure. out. So you can just kind of understand, Mike, I don't know what you guys think, but just having a little bit more time to, I don't know what we got for a time, but I'd like a little more time to, to get more input and to think about it a little bit. Because some of these things I'm just hearing for the first time tonight. So, what is that kind of thing? We have the uh, Vermont Housing and Conservation Board's next meeting is December seventh, and that's the day they would be reviewing and making a decision on the application. This is back. In relation to, I also have uh, property plots. Sure. Yeah, I know there's a lot of private properties within that land mass. Are those affected in any way by the purchase? Um, no, not that I know of, other than being a neighbor. Okay, I'm just wondering. Yep. So you ask. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Go ahead, sir. In relation to the, the point you were just making, I was looking through the. Uh, draft town plan the other day and I happened to notice a sidebar in there uh, that had some information from the recent survey that the planning commission had conducted around town and it uh, pointed out that three quarters of the respondents to the county planning survey supported or were in favor of conservation of scenic and natural areas in Woodbury and the proposed forest districts <coughs> in the plan encompass the entire spine of Woodbury Mountain, clearly designating this area as a place where the townspeople, as voiced through the town planning process, have suggested that this should happen. Uh, it was also a part of town that was highlighted through the community values mapping process that was part of the town plan development. So we have a number of lines of evidence that the community, the preponderance of community members support that in this place, in the town, even though that was developed separately from this specific proposal. So I think there is some information to provide you input in that department. I would just say, though, the town plan has not been distributed and it's not common knowledge to a lot of residents in Woodbury. The select board's done a very poor job. They gave that to most of the citizens in Woodbury, the voters. Um, so, that's gone out. Oh, well, that's not true. I don't know how to talk in 10% of the town. Only about 10%. Actually, it's in the rate. Right. Can I let the chair sure. of the planning commission speak to those comments? Sure. Monty, I want to agree with your assertion that, <clears throat> that only 10% of the town has had access. I thought you said 10%. Just said that. that. Okay, someone said it. So we did three surveys in total, uh, town-wide surveys, and we held a community values mapping session as well. And we had over 300 respondents to our surveys, which is close to 48% of the people in the town of Woodbury. Also, uh, our town plan has been available since December, excuse me, September 17th, online, paper copies, uh, it's been on front porch forum with links to it. Uh, I know Robin has been burning up her copy machine, making paper copies for distribution for anyone who wants it at the town office. So, you know, it's out there, it's been out there. We've held for the, over the past 18 months, at least one meeting a month, sometimes two, sometimes three meetings, going over the uh, draft plan, and also the enhanced energy plan. So it's not like we've been hiding away, sequestered in some room. 
you know, with visors over our head making this plan up. You know, it's been accessible. You know, if, if you haven't been able to access it, give me a call and you can come over to the house and we can talk about it. And if I just might say a couple of words, if you look at the draft town plan in the, and I have to put my glasses on, sorry. In the natural settings portion of the goals, this, on the surface, this acquisition seems to dovetail with our natural setting part of the town plan. It seems to go hand in hand with what the town plan is trying to preserve and protect in the town of Woodbury. And also, let me just go to another section. Also, to address motorized vehicle traffic in the preserve, in the outdoor recreation goal part of the plan, uh, we took comments from Elizabeth and Tim regarding motorized access in Woodbury. And so our objective in this town plan is to expand hiking, biking, skiing, snowshoeing, and off-road motorsports on motorsports opportunities on public and private lands. So we've addressed that in the town plan, and the town plan or the planners are willing to work with motorsports enthusiasts to make that happen. So, you know, the plan's out there. We have a meeting next Monday night uh, to go over the draft plan once again. And then after that, <clears throat> we'll make any additions or edits. Then I'll move over to the select board for the overview. Yes. I was just wondering, um, the draft town plan, like, what's the process by which it becomes, like, not a draft, but, like, the final, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, so, is that, like, something that come up with town meeting day? For a well, by statute, uh, once the draft plan is ready and the plan commission leaves it to be distributed to the public, we have to hold a couple of public meetings. So we have input. We held one on August 28th. We held an additional one on October 18th. And we're holding a third one next Monday night, just to be certain that we can get input from members of, members of the public. You didn't hold one on October 18th. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yep. I was told it was canceled. No. Nope. Right here at the select board meeting. At the select board meeting, I stated that we didn't know what whether that meeting would happen or not and we decided because it was warned that we would hold it anyway um, and then we rescheduled the meeting that's next monday to go within the uh, guidelines for the warning of a hearing um, so that we would be uh, official and legal with that so that'll be the third hearing that we've had where was that put out that the meeting wasn't held? You said it was up in the air? And it was put on, it was put on all of the uh, formats that we have to uh, warn the public. And you know, I don't want to get down and bog down on the town plan. That's not what we're here for tonight. But we, that'll be the third public hearing that has been warned throughout the town and all of the ways that the town is able to warn something. So if, if you didn't know about it, I'm sorry. Right. I think you need to start being a little bit more transparent. Don't. Justin, we have been about as transparent as you can be. You have to actually look through the window to see it. <laughs> I've been okay. coming to every meeting. You have been, yes. Yep. So that's me trying to get I didn't made. state in that meeting. That, in that meeting, it wasn't stated that there wouldn't be a hearing. I stated that I wasn't sure about that hearing because it wasn't up to me to decide whether it would be you or not. And then it was t totally warned and with all of the, the ways that we have in our town to, to warn different meetings and hearings. I believe we have 10 or 12 folks participating in that meeting right. too. So yeah. we Sorry, Miss? Hi, I just had a question about you, are we requesting a letter of support from the select board to aid in your grant proposal. Would letters of support from individual would very residents have any help? Because that is a help. I'm sure many of us are supposed to do that. You know, I don't. <clears throat> I've not. I've done a lot of VHCB applications over the years, and we typically don't try to get letters of support from the general public. I think they. It might. It might be kind of a bombarding effect on them. At some point, they're oh. just gonna. Uh, but I do. I do appreciate the sentiment. Um, yeah. Certainly, reach out to your select board. 
Yeah. You can read it up to the select board and <coughs> write your opinion on this proposal. Well, aren't we going hopefully to decide on this tonight? I don't know if I, we are. I'm I not think, ready to. I, I think that we're going to have to. Oh. We're going to have to wait. Okay. Uh, there are a couple in the back. Um, I'm sorry. So let's uh, try. Let's try to wrap this up in the next ten minutes, okay? Because we do have other things. I just want to say, any of us, and the probably most of us who enjoy being outdoors and enjoying the woods, have been very fortunate all these years to have one family that owns thousands and thousands and thousands of acres that we've all had access to for hunting or any kind of recreation. And to have an opportunity for an, an extra layer of protection for this one special area that's not really developable, um, I think we should take this opportunity. And I hope the select board will agree to a letter of support. We do have one more meeting this month, so we got time to we get some to. input and yeah. deal with it. So this gentleman right here, do you still want to speak? Yeah, uh, that would be nice. Uh, Excuse me, I'm sorry that we've ignored it's you. Fine. Um, so I was wondering if you, you, you put a uh, big emphasis on pedestrian access and we've had discussion about hot main access. Um, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to know or have it made available. Is it on the website? The kind of information that you request from hunters and what the permit process is actually like? Yes. yes. That would be a great help coming from a hunting household. Um, you put a big emphasis on pedestrian recreation, but have excluded mountain biking in the same, you know, in the same breath, kind of saying that your pedestrian trails are, you're investing time and energy into pedestrian trails, uh, designing them to a certain standard to resist erosion. I'm wondering what the hesitancy to design to like IMPA standards or another well-recognized mountain biking standard would be knowing that those trails are sort of like, those trail standards are sort of coincident with good pedestrian trails. Fourth item is with backcountry skiing, do you foresee working with a state agency or any other private backcountry skiing coalition on blading terrain or managing skiing terrain or is it just no cuts, not ever? Sure. Um. I, I will address the mountain biking and, and backcountry skiing glading issue. I don't know if you were asking a question on the first two things you mentioned, but the information about the hunting program is definitely on our website. So you can, you can contact us if you have further questions about that. Um, as to um, mountain biking, of course, the public right-of-ways can be used, uh, or mountain biking can be used on the, the uh, public right-of-ways. We will not have mountain bike trails elsewhere on the property. We don't intend to, to have that. There's, there's so many places in Vermont you can mountain bike that this is just a different experience. We intend it to be a wilderness area where you don't just go through it. Uh, we, we want people to have a different experience there. So that's, and as far as the glades skiing, we certainly welcome backcountry skiing. But it would have to be natural glades. Those things that are already there are naturally created. We're not going to in encourage um, any kind of managed backcountry skiing, skiing experience of that sort. Okay. Does the trail renovation for pedestrian access include trailhead parking, renovations to land outside of just putting up a sign and maybe cutting or raking dust? We have to put the plan together to figure out exactly how that, uh, we, we don't have a particular plan yet other than to, as I said, create an improved trail, probably on existing, uh, but, but slightly modified informal trails that exist now. Yes, you had. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that um, one of my favorite parts of living in Woodbury and what we have here is uh, best seen if you hike up to the top of Nichols Ledge, which is at the other corner of town to look around, and you cannot see a single building. Um, I'm unaware of, of many other places in Vermont where you can do that, and the Woodbury Mountain Preserve, or the, the proposed preserve, is a very big part of that view. I would, I would hate to see the property go another way and lose that. It's not something that's possible to replace. 
You have to tell me when, when to cut it off. Uh, we have five minutes. Random maybe doesn't have anything to do with our conversation, but we're also concerned about the this conversation. Has anybody taken into concern the fact that the quarry is coming and creaching up over the mountain, and now from my house on Wheeler Hill Road, I can look across the ridge and see rock, where I used to see solid trees and solid nothing but beautifulness, and now I see a big patch of white rock that's slowly encroaching over to the side of the mountain. Does anybody care about that? I was right next to that, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And, and, and the, the, the quarry is slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Do we not care about that because it's making us money? Or why? I don't know, just putting that up there. Nobody bought it. <laughs> no, uh, a land trust didn't buy it first. That's, that's right. So maybe that's <laughs> Okay, uh, let's give a couple more people a chance to... I'll just be brief. On the town website, on the contact section, there's a space. If you put your name and your address, and you can make a comment. And that will automatically go to the town clerk, where Robin has agreed to keep a funnel for all the comments on this particular subject. And I've been receiving comments through my email too. I've gotten a few, but I would like to hear right, people's well. viewpoints. So please share. Yeah, please share. Please share away. Let's see what I can get. Stephen, could you be the last person? <laughs> sure. I'd like to okay, say, right. say generally that though we may have pretty wide differences of opinion and strong feelings of disagreement, people have been raising their hands. We're practicing democracy. It's really heartening. We're all neighbors. We'll work this out. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you. Yeah. It would be helpful to me and uh, other select board members if we could just have a show of hands of those Please. who would. Um, in support of the select board, writing a letter of support for the fundraising efforts for the Wilderness Trust. So maybe first, just a show of hands of those who would uh, support the select board writing a letter of support for the trust for this. And then a show of hands of those who would prefer that we didn't do that. I would prefer not at this time, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't support it maybe with a bit more discussion. Um, that's fair enough. I don't know. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot to like about it. You know, there's, there's a lot to like about it. There's, there's, so there's, there's, there's information on the town website about the project. Um, there was a, a very informative kind of question and answer sheet that was put together by um, another resident in Woodbury that. Um, I don't think it's on our website, but it did go out on an email, town email tree that the town maintains. If you didn't get a copy of that, I'd be glad to send that to you. That addressed a lot of the concerns that were expressed at the last Lake Board meeting that have also been expressed tonight. Um, and I, I guess um, it sounds like what we'll do, the select board, um, we will have this on our agenda at our next meeting. Um, and if you, if you have comments that you want to send, or if you have other people that you know who... The next meeting is the 22nd. 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 Right. So, um, we'll... 22nd is the library, right? Well, uh, I think... It should be here. That's it's, something it's, we're going to talk about. It's going to have... I think we'll it's going to have to be here. At least yeah. the next one we'll do here. Yeah. Yep. It's you might have, have to here. wear your boots and snowsuit, but... Yep. It's going to be chilly. <laughs> Alright, cool. You're gonna be cool. Wear your sweater. Okay. Put on the action. Yes. Quick question for you before you go. So, <laughs> hit all. Hit the rest of the light switches when you go out. You're welcome to stay. You know how to do this. Thanks, Ken. That's why he's leaving. That's why he's leaving. All right. Um, next on the agenda, the town clerk's report. I'm going to hit the list of lights. I get um, job postings into the newspaper. Caledonia, it was in on Saturday. Parker Gazette. News and Citizens in the World will all be published the 10th. And I still haven't heard anything from the Times Argus. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, okay. That's important. 
So maybe in the future, maybe we shouldn't deal with the Times Argus if they're, they seem to be they're, the... They're not responsive. Right. What is the deadline for applications? I'm sorry? The deadline for applications? For the 25th. third row crew? Yeah. 25th of November. 25th, okay. Then when I send it to the time directors, I send it to the advertising department plus Melody that helped me before mm -hmm. I saw it. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. My recordings are up to date. And then um, I sent the select board the information from the method papers about the road usage. Okay, that's it. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but that's a yearly, we just got a yearly it. thing. Can we act on right, it? We have to warn it. There's one section of the road they want yeah. to. So we'll warn it for the next meeting. Yeah, this was new to me, but I think we do have to warn it. We do it every year, yeah. We'll warn it for the we'll next, warn it for the okay. next meeting. Um, so we'll put that up. Because, yeah, it's a standard it's, it's, yearly, it's, yearly but thing. But it is one know. extension that we weren't right. necessarily familiar with. Okay. Typically, he contacts us and comes to a slide. Yeah. He, yeah. he has done yeah, that. He said he's willing to come to a slide. Okay. okay. Well, that'd be good. Do we want him to do that? I, I mean, if it's a tradition. Yeah. I don't need him to. Year. It's the same, I, yeah, I don't, I, it's I don't the same thing we do it. every year, so. Okay. It's the well, same. It hasn't changed. But, and is it the but same person? What's, one, one what's one is it? Uh, it's if somebody you want gray, it. right? Uh, uh, Steve. Steve Gray. Steve Gray. Steve Gray. If you want him to come, I'm not opposed to it, so. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm new to the select like, board, so it's new to me. It so looks like they want to add one short section on the county road. On the county road. Okay. To yep. the list that's already there. Yep. Or they used in the past. Okay. When I compared it to previous years, it was very similar. And if it's already been approved it's year been after year, yeah. yep. I guess I, I, you know, it's not a section of road that I travel all that often. I, I just maybe. They behave themselves. Yeah, like, and it would be. Are you are you familiar with that piece of road, Chuck? That that they're the new piece on County Road. I haven't seen the email yet. I haven't seen it. Okay. Well, I'll just okay, show you the copy. That I, well, we can review it for next time. Yeah. Okay. So we'll, we can invite Steve Gray to come, or we can just look at the uh, document that he's given us and and discuss it. Um, I'm good with just having us discuss okay. it. Okay. Okay. So, so no you, yeah, right. we, I don't, unless you really want him there, I don't need him there. Yeah, if you guys are comfortable, I guess I'm the only one. Okay. I'll figure it. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll have that on the agenda for the next meeting. Um, Eleven twenty-two. Uh, anything yeah, else? Yeah, I have board to date. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I have um, last week's or last time's minutes for you guys to sign. The last meeting? I already oh, signed. We have a copy here yeah. okay. somewhere. Yeah. And I have, yeah. I have the copy that I have so, not read or signed. So. Yeah. And I can leave that at the town office on my way home with, with, the, with the warrants. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank okay. you. Then the other thing I have, I'm going to pass off to Brandy because it's under her section and it's the auditors. Okay. Thing. Yeah. Um, it, well, I just put it on there. Um, I couldn't remember when the um, when the bids were due, um, but I found recently found they're due so they're next not, Monday. Okay. Yep. All right. Have we received anything at all yet? We've received one, mm -hmm. and they turned it down. Okay. All right. Good deal. So, any right, questions? Good as ever. Yep. I did ask uh, people in town, and she is willing. I don't like. John Fadon, but she is willing to uh, be voted in in March. And so as long as we can get. Okay. And John but Reed. Yeah. Yep. Okay. John, <laughs> John Reed, but did everybody see the email that he'd like to attend the BLCT audit class? And I just would mm -hmm. like to. Please let me take it. Sure. <laughs> okay. Any time. Education that, that he wants for auditing. That Anyone wants to be an auditor, we'll audit them. We'll yeah. let them be audited. We'll let them audit. And I think, you know, it's always been kind of a standing select board thing. If there's any town official that needs training, needs training, wants training, um, the fee is so minimal that it's not really an issue with well, at least. I'll go ahead and book that for him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And they'll just fill us. Okay. 
I believe Jane wants to take it also. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. You will uh, actually have the books audited by two meeting days. Yeah. So, um, any questions at all or, uh, for Robin? Nope. Town Clerk's report? No, thank you. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Okay, um, Town Treasurer's report. So, the warrants, payroll warrant for the last two weeks is $9,355.37. AP, $9,355.37. Expenses were $44,751.62. Electronic transfers that came into our savings was $18,893.10. Part of that being was Swenson's taxes and their quarterly mm -hmm. of $8,000, which is, is lower than, than um, what it's been for the quarter. Is there a fight outside? There's a lot of people. Uh, Eight thousand eight hundred six dollars and fifteen cents, which I just first fifty-five thirty-five ten. Um, uh, cash receipts took in six hundred sixty-two thousand six hundred forty dollars and twenty-three cents. Delinquencies twenty-five thousand six hundred fifty-eight dollars and forty-five cents. I did. I transferred from the check into the money market six hundred forty thousand even. Mm -hmm. um, I did my warrant transferring delinquencies to Ron. Mm -hmm. It was roughly 20 grand less than last year. Mm -hmm. which I'm super That's happy great. About. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got to meet our VLCT passive um, renewal. Is up. So I, I, I talked with Chance today. I got to meet with him. There's some questions I need to finalize about the liability. Um, what else am I doing? I still have outstanding invoices um, for the category grant. Um, so I made some calls loving them to invoice us. Um, the Gorman group being one of them. Um, she didn't have a split, so <laughs> I had the scanner um, showing that they did service. Miss um, Brandy, how much were we? What was the difference then? The cabinet road? No, no, no. The invoices the haven't invoices, finished. Sorry. The invoices haven't finished. Did you have any, we, we have no idea. So I can't. No, 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 no. I have the slips, but they are not billing us. I have the, the statements. You have the statements. But they're not billing us yet. I don't have the invoices. So therefore, um, I just have no, the she doesn't have the, no statements. the slips. Right. Right. She doesn't have so the statements yet. Statements. Missing the statements, yeah. To the the pick up statements. Have checks cash and clear the bank. Yeah. Um, okay. Or to get our money back. Right. Yeah. We, I mean, we have plenty of time for the deadline sure. for the report. It's yes. actually not till next spring, but the sooner we get everything, the sooner we get reimbursed. Reimbursed. Um, right. So. So this, the VLCT, is this? Um, it's just the renewal for next calendar year. Okay. Right. So it's getting all the information collected is an estimate is mm -hmm. what it is. What mm -hmm. they can base us off. If we're under or over, we get a refund. Mm -hmm. If we're over then, or under, then, then we owe them usually a cushion of about two to 3000 mm -hmm. um, depending on work. Based on our winners. Yeah. Or how much you actually pay people. Yeah. So at the end of every year, you've got to have it laid out how much people are paid. It's what they base your next year's rates on. So okay. one thing that I'm going to put out, so I've heard from, well, reading the library minutes and speaking with one of the other funds, that they're going to be requesting more money um, for town meeting. Mm -hmm. So I am going to ask them to make a time with you at a select board meeting okay. to present that instead of it being a shock and being an article right. of why to justify and why they, they are requesting more mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. um, so I will attach the select board in that email okay. to the different funds um, and then go from there mm -hmm. because it's going to be budget time before we know it. Well, it's pretty much there. We're, 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 we're pretty right. much we're there. there, yeah. Um, 
Okay. Any any questions for Brandy at all? Oh, good. Thank you. You know, what, um, just mentioning budget time because I did tag that in the town highway report. Um, usually, we start working on the budget in December. Um, often, we'll have a special meeting just for working on the budget. Um, so I think we should probably plan, you know, I, and I'm aware, Chuck, that you're, um, you know, have plans to get out of here in December sometime. Um, so it would be good for us to um, maybe at our next meeting start talking a little bit about the um, highway budget while you're here. Um, and I don't know how that'll come, you know, how that'll work out with um, our road foreman off deer hunting, but... Um, yeah, you can have a duck. It'll be all right. Okay, all right. I'll give them a, a, a work sheet budget. Oh, good for you. Good. Okay, great. All right. And so we'll maybe focus on the highway budget first so we can kind of get, yeah, you get, it laid get out. that pretty much laid out and then we'll focus on the other other parts of the budget um, in into December. December. Yeah. Um, yeah. So usually we try to have that done by the end of December so that it can get put into the town report. Yeah. When's the first meeting in December? So, uh, I got it right here. Okay, good. It will be December 13th. It will, uh, go yeah. So, so we got to do so yours the next meeting, in the 22nd between of the November. Holidays, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to set an evening hour. Mm -hmm. A special night for budgets, yeah. Yeah, yeah we've it's done that. It's not a select board meeting. Yep. Um, because everybody's going to have plans coming up here soon. Yep. Mm -hmm. But we'll do, let's do the highway budget next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's make that for the 22nd. Okay. And me and Robin can work on the general funds. We'll just have to sit here till it's done. Mm -hmm. We'll just have to just work it out. Till it's done, yeah. Usually it's not too bad because no. usually the road crew is pretty well worked it out and... and yeah, uh, there's a few no. small changes, but yeah. it ain't a lot different than last year. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, Anything else with the town Thank treasurer's you. report? Okay. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Brandy. So on to the town highway report. Well, I need a lot more on right now. I didn't have uh, Friday we had trouble with the motor over heat, but mm -hmm. said it was on the heat. And I don't believe it was. And I called Cat Mountain and made it they made a service call up today. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get done work to done. I see the loaders out of ours, but I didn't get done work in time to find out what's going on. I'm pretty sure it was the, the sending unit mm -hmm. for the temperature. But, mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get a bill for that from Cat Mountain. But, mm -hmm. uh, we've been finishing up some home in. I'm having trouble with. Uh, I can't even think of his name now, but uh, Chris Green hit mm -hmm. that I door pipe in mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get on, I want to think of you, but it ain't you, it's Hans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got the ditch plugged and I saw that. It, and yep. he did that last Wednesday, said he was going to be there at 9.30, I got over there at 10. And again at quarter of 11, and he wasn't around, so I went back to work and got back over there at 2.30 and he was all done. Mm -hmm. And so I called Chris, told him that we something had to be done with it because the water couldn't get down the ditch. And he'd give me Hans's number, and I've been calling him, I've called, called him probably 10 or a dozen times. Mm -hmm. He donated to his phone and his mailbox was full, so I mm -hmm. haven't even been able to leave him a message. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess I'm going back to Chris Green tomorrow. Is this somebody that Chris has hired to take care of that sewage pipe? He's the one who put it in originally and didn't yep. put it in the way it should have been. Right. And he came back and fixed it. But he still ain't got it right. Mm -hmm. So it's still blocking the ditch. Still blocking the ditch. Uh, the ditch plugged right off. Yeah, basically filled the ditch in. Yeah. yeah. Put a bunch of boulders over it. Yeah, and he put styrofoam in there. Mm -hmm. So I really don't want to send the boys over with the estimated to that star foam up and then... Mm -hmm. And you got to clean it and everything, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So that's where we're at. Okay, yeah. But I'm going to call Chris, Chris tomorrow. I didn't get 
been working on today. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Uh, the other thing is, I've been to uh, West Woodbury four different times meeting tree people. And Bear brought it to my attention that it's a major problem over that cemetery right there. Mm-hmm. There's a public tree in that big around. Mm-hmm. It grows over 45 and then it goes straight out right over it. And it's been hit with lightning or something. There's a seam right down the back of it. Mm-hmm. And if that comes down into that cemetery, it's going to destroy two thirds of the stones. Mm-hmm. And they're getting ready to have a guy up there with a big excavator to stump it. And he's all insured and bonded and all that stuff. He says for 1500 bucks he'll take that tree down and get rid of it. Mm-hmm. But it's coming up soon, so... Mm-hmm. We'll You've seen it, so it needs to be done. Oh, it's definitely. So then we got a conversation that Bear and I had when yes. we went up and did the survey of that property. Is that something? You had a little bear, too? We were out there in the summertime. Yeah. When we did the GPR survey of the upper part of the cemetery, when yeah. they st- before they'd stumped it, right. and we gave that report to the cemetery commission, which mm-hmm. I don't even know of. I've never heard a response, so yeah. I don't know. So it sounds saying. like we need to do it. And but we it sounds like it needs to bill it to the cemetery commission's mm-hmm. fund. Yep. Well, I, mean, I don't care how we do it, but yeah. I think that we gotta do it. It's yeah. gonna be foolish to not do it while that machine's there. Yeah. 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 We should just yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. So we we'll just do it. So let's do it. It's right. gotta be done, and we'll figure out where we're gonna do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because then black slate stones. Yeah, they'll be real break them. Yep. Yeah, those I are mean, those are. There's some old stones. Those are old. Yeah. The slate stones are. Old. They're incherably brittle and they're old and they're weathered, heavy. Yeah. So you know. Yeah. There's no replacement. It's time those. to do it. I had one guy tell me and said, "Well, he said we could take pictures of it and move stones, fall tree in or something." No, like no, we, yeah, no, we ain't doing that. <laughs> but yeah, we'll figure out. No, fifteen hundred dollars to dig a tree down sounds like yeah. the right. Yeah, the right price. It is a big tree. I mm-hmm. mean. Yeah, but you've seen it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it's literally over top of the entire cemetery. It is. Yeah. So. And it's pop. Yeah, and it's, it's gonna come it's down. It's gonna come yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. It, Plus it's the back side of the split. You see you see the bank that it's on, right? Yeah. So yeah. There's, okay. it's not even rooted on the back side. No. So I think the select board is in agreement. Yeah, we're in agreement. We're in agreement. Right. Take it down and we'll yeah. we'll pay we'll it. find I'll the find money. Pay to take it down. Yeah. Okay. I'll get a hold of the Bear tomorrow I'll let him know. Mm-hmm. Would you ask him to give me a call as well? Bear? Yeah. 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 Do you have any number? He does. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Or you can give him on again. Yeah. Just in case he doesn't have it again. Right? Yeah, That's no great. Problem. Um we're honing up some roads that are real bad. Kelly Rose Max. Yeah, the corner by Bob Lord is real bad, or Kevin well, Lord's that tore, tore that up off of that yeah. last couple of rains. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they'll get it before it yeah. freezes up. Cran- Cranberry Meadow Road is pretty rough, too. Cranberry Meadow Road done today. Because uh, that was too uh, wet to do yesterday, yeah. but it might be okay tomorrow. Yeah. Foster yeah. Hill, the lower half of Foster Hill is done today. Kevin, uh, Cranberry Meadow Road is done today. I want to do the Kennedy Road from Cranberry Meadow to the Black Top. Mm-hmm. And the cabinet road from Quarry Road up is right so full of washboards. And when he's out there, can you just have him do that flat spot between the, where the turn is up to your old driveway? Because there's quite a few potholes in there. The rest of it out through there is fine. Down? Yeah, you know yeah, that sharp. Head, yeah. yeah, head back just, just between that corner and up to where yeah. your old driveway. It's just You'll see where it's, yeah. it's, it's all tore up there. And yeah. I think if you just smoothed it out, it'd be good for the winter. Yeah. The, no, not to do too much because it'll be a mud hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's a well, catch, catch twenty two. <laughs> we're yeah, we're kind of trying to limit it to. Yeah, because it'll be a mess if we do yeah. too much. Yeah, I'll get after. But the rain got after. You seen it on that corner? It just ripped it up. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I guess that's been all that. Okay, so um, just I I tagged a couple other things under the town highway report. I know we're. Um, you know, waiting for applications to be received uh, to, for the third full-time road crew member. And then we probably should have, a, again, a special uh, meeting to go, you know, to interview ap- applicants. Um, you said that's on the 25th, you the open. The 25th is the deadline, which happens to be uh, Thanksgiving Day, I guess. Yeah, so I had, what we, <laughs> quite, I just my brain. So what we ought to do is set that special meeting at our next meeting on the 22nd. Oh, 22nd. Okay. Maybe the following yeah. um, 
Well, I got yeah. commitments on my off Mondays. We can pick a night. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll figure out a night that'll work for or a day. Right? If we yeah. get, well, depending on how many you get, if it's just one or two, it'll be easy to do sometime. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll figure that out then. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Um, and then this, uh, uh, we have been requested. You know, if, if we would like to try to take advantage of the municipal roads general permit highway equipment grant, we talked about it at our last, last uh, select board meeting. Um, we just, at this point, we just basically need to um, uh, send a, a letter of intent. I think there's a particular form that we would just fill out for that. Um, I th and the deadline um, is soon. I you think wanted to get the gravel packer. That's well, what we talked about. Right? Yeah, and I talked to Greg about it. And the turnarounds at the town lines are not big enough so we can get Greg to turn around with it on that. Uh, uh -huh. But I have been doing some research, and we can buy one that will go in front of a truck. And I'm thinking that 4900, well, Greg and I are both thinking that, with that 4900 with the chloride tank in it, would be a great match. So we okay. should put the so letter of intent okay. in. So we'll, I, I think, you know, it says in, in the um, items, it's my memory of, of reading that is that it would be um, something that could go behind a tractor, but I, I don't think it matters what the vehicle is yeah. that pulls it. I don't think it, it... That one was for the greater. Uh, the yeah. the uh, Burma was for a tractor. Yeah, tractor. We had the Burma. We were, okay, the one I right. gave you a price for was on the front of the loader. The loader. Yeah. yeah. That was nine grand okay. or something. Right. Yeah. This okay. roller, in fact, I yeah. may have a new email from you. I think I said it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Check anything today. But uh, we can buy a, a nine foot roller and we'll in front of that truck. Mm -hmm. And he's going to give me a price on that. So we should probably put the letter of it yeah. in. It's, okay. it's going to yeah. weigh approximately 1,800 pounds. But it's also going to have a bung in it so that we can add or. Mm -hmm. Subtract. Put some, the some material in the roller. Okay. All right. So we'll. Um, I'll find that letter of intent and we'll get it um, sent out. Um, and we'll indicate what we're interested in. If you do have a price, I don't know if that's even required at this point. I think we just have to state that yes, we're interested in in pursuing um, a, trying to acquire a piece of equipment okay. through this. Okay. The next three days are going to be crazy, crazy, but after that, I'll have some time. Okay, all right. Get things straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll have some time tomorrow just to find it and, and refresh my memory on what yeah, it's all about. Yeah, because they're going to give us money. It's foolish not to Why we not right. take, take it. it. Yeah. Particularly, we have a couple needs, so. Yeah. yeah. We have two things oh, we, we could buy. Um, I yeah. don't know if was the list of those roads. Yeah, I, so, I, I think the one he's talking about is the one from Dog Pond to... Greenwood Lake Road. Is Steve the, Gray, the mountain tamer person? Not, not tamer person. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. a lot of times they'll access then up Greenwood and across to get on the trail up on Buck Lake yeah. Road. Yeah, but they, he wants to use the trail from down Pond Road, mm -hmm. down the county road down around the corner. Okay. That hasn't been used hasn't, for trail lately. And it's been a long time. It's been a long yeah. time. They yeah. used to many moons ago. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. it has it's yeah, been nearly a decade since it's really that road a while. Yeah. Really? The whole, the whole county was in the plow. Wow. Yes, sir. When I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Wow. So nobody, sounds like nobody really lived on Actually, you know, they just no, got electricity out there. it was all camps, right? Those somewhere. places, yeah. they didn't have power until yeah. yeah. not too long ago. The buildings were over the four corners, but there wasn't anybody living there. Yeah. And Rick Cannon's house wasn't there then. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Willie said yep. that yeah, there was, was you think, Yeah, there was nothing out there. There was nothing there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Plow the whole road, they plowed down the end of Greenwood Lake, mm -hmm. and it stopped. Yep. And that's where it ended. Huh. Wow. Okay. That's where I was when I was a kid. Anything that's else, Chuck? Okay. No. That's it. Any, any questions for Chuck? No, we're good. Thank you. We're good. Thank okay. you. Okay, well, so after the next three days, I will be over to the fire station with my estimator. Okay, yeah, whatever you need to do, just do it. Just, yeah. I was thinking the road might have got too frozen to do anything. It did freeze no, the other yeah, day and then it thawed back out again. No, it's fine. Yeah. I know, um, I was, you know, doing uh, some of the beaver stuff that I do during that heavy rain, um, there was a fair amount of water kind of trickling around the corner of the um, school parking lot and running down. Um, yeah, we're going to. When I get over He's going to make some adjustments. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pile of stone that's okay. over there. Pile of wood. 
I mean, we'll stop that trickle. Okay, great. Yeah, the final fix is to pave that up to the school and get our yes. apron paved. The yeah. apron yeah. And then, but we got to deal with the call. We got it's a. <laughs> that reminds me, what whatever happened to the? Um, um, my blanking out on the, the guardrail that was going to be put in there. Well, uh, it's a good question. I've called it three times. Mm -hmm. uh, I was supposed to have been on the list not to, for October. Yeah, that's what I'm remembering. It, somehow I didn't get put on the list. It's right next to my hose and ladder testing. It was supposed to be here in October. And yeah, probably. I haven't heard from anybody, so yeah, 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 getting a little late. So they're going to see if they can get it worked in the next week. Okay, days. okay. Thanks for following up. Yeah, Thanks, no Chuck. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda, um, I got a, an email from uh, Grace Vincent, the um, Regional Planning Commission person who's overseeing the uh, stormwater mitigation projects in town. And they, um, they would like, uh, or actually it's the Department of uh, DEC, the Department of Environmental Con Conservation, would like um, a statement from the town um, uh, committing to, um, actually let me read it, it, it probably will make more sense if I read it rather than trying to say what it says. Um, so they would like from the town, um, the town of Woodbury, a statement just saying, the town of Woodbury intends to move forward to the implementation stage for the stormwater treatment at the Woodbury Elementary School contingent upon available funding. Um, the town is committed to operations and maintenance responsibilities. So we've already um, indicated when, when the 100% design, when the design part of this um, project went into effect, we also sent a, a letter of, of a commitment to um, that we would um, you know, maintain um, and oversee the operations of, the, of whatever was put in place there. And this is the one site that we have agreed that um, that we want to have put in place. Right, because so, we only selected that one out of yeah, three designs. Yeah, because it was the one yeah, that worked. Four, four, four actually, yeah. Right. It's the only one that was functional. Yeah, so um, what they're asking for now is um, uh, a, le a letter from the town that we do intend to move forward with the implementation stage, which would be the actual putting in of, of the proposal that, that's been designed. Um, and the key here for me is contingent upon availability of funding. So we would not do this unless They're going to pay there was it. a significant right. grant that would pay for right. most of the project. Um, right. To me, that's what contingent upon available availability of funding means. Because we're not going to fund it. We're we not going to fund it, it no. It's impossible. Well, it would, be, it would be, again, it would be a grant process. So um, and they would... They, I'm figuring an 80-20 match, but in order to put that in a budget... Well, it's, it's not going to happen in the next fiscal year, yeah, I'm it's sure. not happening. Yeah, we, there would be we the, don't have a number. We don't have yeah. a number. There would be an application process. Um, it would be awarded or not awarded. Um, and Michael, may I ask, did we ever address the fact that they thought it was an above-ground tank? And they had to revise it for the fact that there is a propane tank that's buried right there in the way of everything? Well, actually, the, um, in the design that um, Chris Rivett put together, um, he didn't feel that the tank were, is, would be a problem. With, yeah, because the last drawing I saw was that it was not. He did, he did address that. He did address it was on there, yeah. It was on there. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It yeah. Wasn't the last there. iteration the we last saw, iteration we yes, the tank was there. The was there. Correct. And it was and outside did. of the area of the tank. And okay. we did. We did so, yes, it. thank you. It, it was taken okay. care of. That's yeah. right. Thanks. So, um, so. Uh, Obviously, we've gotten this far, um, and if they're going to help, I think the reason that DC is wanting um, this commitment from the town is that um, they're basically are, are going to be the ones that are going to find the funding for us or fund it themselves. Okay. Um, we're not going to. We're not going to. Yeah. No. And I can add that sentence. Yeah, I think I'd put that right in there. So it's okay. contingent on grant funding grant by the state. Okay. Yeah. Not. I will from us because it's an expensive little project. I will underline that particular statement. That way, our, our statement of commitment is contingent on not yeah. a vague, uh, you know, has to be a vague right. understanding. Yeah, and then I'll add a we, sentence we, saying we, that Woodbury, um, the town of Woodbury, is not able to fund this correct. only through a grant. Independently, we would only be able to fund it through a grant. Correct. Okay. 
Good. So I don't think we need to vote on that. Are we in agreement that we, agree. it's okay to sign? Okay. I'm in agreement with that. And are you okay with me um, adding that sentence and yes. signing this on behalf of the select board and sending I it in? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so as we heard earlier tonight, there is a third town plan hearing uh, scheduled for next Monday here at the town hall starting at 6 o'clock. Are they going to tape it? Because I can't be here. I got a commitment Monday night. I, I can just read the minutes. I'm mostly interested in the comments. Okay. Well, there is a, there's a whole new ser um, series of comments. That every comment that's made is recorded, and there's a whole new sheet of comments that uh, just I saw it on my email. When okay, I got so you can forward today. it. Okay. Because yeah. yeah. I just can't be here yeah. next Monday night. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, so yeah, all the comments from um, the two previous hearings. <clears throat> Comments that have come in via the website. I'll be reading um, comments till my eyes fall out. Yeah, there's, there's, there's quite there's, a list there's of them. Yeah. The comments. But I will read them all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so those will be available. And and the comments that are made at this meeting on, on November 15th will Which also, skip will document or, yeah, or yeah. also be documented, yeah. yeah. So just finally, um, I thought maybe just we could informally um, figure out future meetings for the select board. Um, obviously, it's getting colder. Uh, we're lucky it was a mild day today. Um, but it does seem that um, using the town hall going forward through the winter probably won't work. So um, the I've alternative. Been we've been meeting in it for 10, 10 years. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> Well, I'll wear my long johns if you want. I, I'm good at doing it. You're gonna have, I can just tell you when it's cold out, you'll, your feet from about here, here yeah. you'll freeze and your hover yeah. part is cold. But I, I think we should not do it here because we, we're right. gonna, it's, not, it's not a great place to meet right. at all. Well, we already agreed that the 22nd. Yeah, we need to we're be, here. be here. Because I think there might be some that. people here. Yeah. Right? Because we might. So let's say that. Yeah. I'm not sure of your name, but yes. Dennis. Yeah. Dennis, Dennis yeah. heard it. So we got to meet here next Okay, week. yeah. Yeah. Right. So and I guess moving forward, we can meet at the uh, community we room. We can meet at the community, community room. room. Yeah. yeah, it's a smaller space, um, but... Um, Unless we have a big hearing, we'll have to right. move down here again. Yeah. Or we'll maybe, have to wear maybe we could use the school gym, too. Yeah. Um, but. Well, we can, so, should I ask about that? Hmm? Should I ask about that? Uh, you could if you want. Um, it would be the um, school principal is Lisa McCarthy, mm -hmm. and I have her contact yeah. information. It's okay, I have two kids in school. So okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, so you you have that. Most of the time, too. the community room should work. Yeah, and we actually should um, ask permission for the community room too, because technically that is leased to the school. That's a that's an is used as a an extra classroom. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to get permission for that too. Typically, the after school program ends by five p.m. Yep. So by 6 p.m. on we're Monday, good. we should be good. We're in the clear. Okay. And then the other question that came up like with this uh, meeting tonight um, were people who did want to come and hear that presentation. Um, fortunately, HCTV recorded it, um, and so it'll be available that way. But um, there has been a question coming up about <coughs> a remote access to the meetings. Um, and in the community room with the uh, internet connection, we probably could work something out and, and maybe I'll talk to our two skips about how that. Yeah, if someone knows work. how to figure it out, that's definitely not in right. my. It's not in my, um, although we did, um, we did have a planning commission there where that was our public space and I brought my laptop and the people that did come in, we all kind of sat within view of the laptop camera. We can, we can do better. Right. Yeah, plus, we've got to, if we're going to do if we're going to do that type of access, we've got to read the VLCT rules of because mm -hmm. oh, you oh, don't get your meeting hijacked. Like everyone's got to identify themselves if they're on their phone. Right. You only get to speak at public comment because it, it can become really out of control. If you're yeah, not, it could be nice for some of our community members who are yeah. not necessarily in town. Yeah. So right. Participate like our road like commissioner. I don't mind doing it. It's just I, I can't. I don't know how to do it. I so don't know if how you want I, me I to do know, it. I just, yeah, we'll, I have to well, fly and fly to I, Europe. I'm pretty, pretty well. confident that we have townspersons that. Yeah, we do. As long as they get someone who can will, make it happen, because I'm not the guy. So when I'm it breaks, I can't fix it. I'm on to get into that with some of the people who are near doing it. Okay. Is that right. enough? And we just people yeah. got to understand that it's, if it breaks down, we're going to continue to have the meeting. Right. You know, it's just yep. we're trying yep. to do it as just a courtesy. It's about, it's about connectivity. Yeah. Yep. Which is another conversation yep. that we have to have at yep. some point. So. 
So it'll be something similar to what we did last year when, yep. um, you know, at, the, at that point, if H HCTV is willing, um, we could live stream the meetings. Which and, is what we did last which summer. Which is what we did last year. <coughs> summer, yeah. So there is a way of doing it. And, and yeah, what maybe, we did is then they, we, they had a phone number people could call. Yeah, if they so maybe we can do it with a phone or maybe with a laptop. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, okay. So let's plan um, for in the future, starting in December, that our select board meetings will be in the community room um, until it's till spring. We can move back in here. Uh, is there any other business? Yes. A couple things. Um, mm -hmm. The town office will be closed on Thursday, from nine to one. Our regular hours for Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. um, also, I will be putting a notice out. Um, the ARPA committee will be meeting November 11th, which is Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked... Nope. This Thursday. This Thursday. Okay, yep. Um, so we will... Um, I have packets made out for everybody. Um, so just uh, announcing everybody's role. Um, getting the information and then getting some ideas going. Mm -hmm. I did ask Tara Rogers, who works for the state, mm -hmm. if she would be interested, and she is, so she'll be joining the committee. Okay. Which I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'll get the warnings out in place. Mm -hmm. The town office, the post office. So you're going to warn it and take minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so Perfect. we'll have a, a chair, a secretary, <coughs> Good, okay. And where will that be held here? At the town office. The town office, yeah. okay, all right. There's now six of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. Any other business to people would like to bring before the select board? Okay, uh, hearing it. none, the next Motion item on the agenda is to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay.